What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash choosing beggars. This story's called, Nurse Experiences Choosing Beggar in the Wild. This is my first post to Reddit ever, so please be constructive with criticism if needed. Please, I'm not a writer, forgive mistakes. Backstory, I'm a nurse, single mom, ayo, what's up? Two boys, nine and seven, one of whom is special needs, which I pay a considerable amount for services. I'm a single income family and work hard and save for everything. My kids get an allowance for chores and have their own savings accounts. This is relevant to the Choosing Beggar event. I work in the NICU, and that means many slash most are not prepared to be there with their newborn or preemie. As a side note, my oldest was in the NICU, Niku, I'm just gonna say Niku, uh, so I know how tough this can be. This year with Brovid, I've seen and heard more hardships than I have in my total eight years previously. I decided that this year, rather than receive my $100 Christmas bonus, I asked if I could sponsor a family and provide items they needed. I had a particular family in mind. Mind. I was given permission. My boys and I proceeded to buy things the family had previously mentioned not having. Things that they've asked friends and family for, but were told were too expensive. And even a wish list the father provided me. Oh my god. I showed up to work last night super excited about bringing these items to the mom and dad. I'm gonna cry if this goes how I think it is. A few things. They do not know my situation or that by providing for them, my kids are receiving less. However, they gained a lot through the experience and that is where worth more than any toy, book, or monetary thing. And I didn't mention that the money for said items came from me, and my seven-year-old even donated some of his savings from his allowance. I explained to my kids what we were doing with my bonus, and as a family, we had a great time picking out the items, and my sons were super happy to be giving to another family. There were a few things that even with me adding money in, we weren't able to buy. So my seven-year-old told me to take it out of his allowance savings that he's been saving for nine months. That's a long time to a seven-year-old for those without children. I show up to work, presents wrapped and excited. Again, these were all items I had either overheard the mom say they were lacking, as well as a wish list of newborn preemie items the father provided. I went over my bonus, added money of my own, as well as my son providing his savings. I didn't expect anything, but was hoping by gifting these items, the family would have a great Christmas as well as a few less hardships. I bring the items to the parents. The mom looks and asks, asks what it is. I tell her it's an early Christmas for her and her family. She opens each item and gets more agitated with each one. Oh my god. She makes comments like, oh great, another thing for the baby. Or, oh great, a coffee card that someone probably got for free. It was a $30 gift card to the place she always has coffee from, slash the place she always asks people to bring her coffee from, and most definitely not free. She's been using a breast pump at the hospital hospital, so I splurged and bought her one, as this was an item many had told her they couldn't afford, couldn't afford to rent, and she plans to continue to pump once she gets home. At the end, she looked at me and said, This sucks! No one thought of the older kids or me! Where's the gift receipt? I'd rather have the cash. The kid wasn't planned anyway! They won't even know if they don't have these things! It's true, I didn't buy gifts for the older kids, as the father told me they were covered by a charity. I bought essentials for taking the baby home and things that will make the remaining hospital stay easier. These were all things she didn't have to safely have the baby at home, as well as a few splurges of things she wouldn't have from the previous children. At any rate, I felt extremely discouraged. Thanks for letting me vent. Edit slash update. Though the mom has been warned by administration multiple times, she's been trying to sell the items to other families. This is not okay due to Brovid, as we cannot room share, etc. Ask anyone admitted, they'll tell you they were sent home with medical things, needed or not. At any rate, I wanted to think she was stressed, but she tried to sign adoption papers without husband's consent. I won't get into it, so it's not specific. However, she's been trying to extort those unable to have children and capitalize on their pain. I can't and won't go into detail as to why this was the case, but imagine trying to sell your child. Oh my god. Oh my god. OP, I am so sorry. You know what? I love you. I will marry you. Wait, that's not what this is about. 
I will appreciate your gifts for them. Um, you're so nice. Very nice. Your kid, very mature. Oh my god, this is so heartbreaking. I'm sorry, Obi. This story's called, Guy Declined Room in Flatshare, but tried to get the most out of it anyway. This happened several years ago, but I still laugh about it when it comes to mine. Backstory. I was renting an apartment, which was a three-person flatshare. One person had just moved out, so I had to look for a replacement. I posted an ad and got a nice email from this guy, so I invited him over to view the apartment. We had the usual chat about what we do for a living. He was working an office job, but was about to start his own business. Our daily routines and so on. He was enthusiastic about the apartment and seemed like a decent guy in general, so after a day or two, I told him he could have the room. Whereas he replied he would like to come over again to talk some things over and get to know the other flatmate, who hadn't been around the first time he came to view the place. I replied he was welcome to come over again, but the other flatmate was currently traveling and wouldn't be back until the following month. I had told him this before, but he must have forgotten or misunderstood. He wasn't too happy about that. So he came over again and decided to let me in on some rather interesting facts, which she had not mentioned before, like that he had a stepson who was 10 years old. The boy was his ex's son with whom he had been in a relationship for several years, but they had recently broken up, hence why he was looking for a new place to stay. He then proceeded to tell me how the boy would be very happy to come over sometime to use the pool, which belonged to the apartment complex, because they had become very attached and therefore he was still kind of taking care of the boy sometime despite the breakup. Aww. The boy would also sleep over once a week if that was okay with us. Um, okay? Thanks for only telling me about the kid now? Anyway, he asked me if he could let me know the next day because of the chaotic situation with the ex, the boy, and everything else. I was just kind of stunned at this point, so I said, okay. I figured if he did move in and things got out of hand, I could terminate his renting agreement anytime. The next evening, I wrote him an email and asked whether he had decided yet. He once more asked if he could come by a third time to talk. I already had a bad feeling, so I told him I was busy and it would make more sense if he could just tell me by email. And boy, what an email I received! He wrote that he had had to make a really tough decision whether to stay with his, now suddenly, wife, not girlfriend anymore, or whether to definitely leave her. Um, the way he talked about it the first time, it sounded like she had left him, not the other way around. He had decided to stay with his wife, wife slash girlfriend and not take the room, which was totally fine by me. And then he turns into the choosing beggar. After declining the room, he continues his email like this. Free promo. I don't know what that is. He said he would like to come by sometime as soon as he had launched his business and bring some promo material along. Oh, that's a subject line. No, you do not get to invite yourself over and additionally promote your stuff, which I am not interested in, renting the seller. But he would be interested in renting a part of the cellar to store his wine and stuff. Seriously? You want to rent a 1 by 2 1M2? Is that 1 meter 1 by 2 meter of cellar space from me? How will I explain that to management and how would you get in anyway? I would obviously not give you a key to the building. Plus, although he mentioned renting the space for cash, at this point I didn't doubt for a second he wouldn't have eventually tried to negotiate his way into using the space for free. Pool. He would love to use the pool one to two times a month as guests of the flat share. The other tenants surely wouldn't notice or mind. What the fuck? You want me to let you and your family use the pool for free as guests of the flat share? We met two times for a grand total of 30 minutes and you declined the room. I don't even consider you an acquaintance, much less a friend. I would not be comfortable inviting you over as a guest. And step off. Of course the other tenants would notice. Imagination. He had already imagined imagined it all and was therefore a bit sad that it wasn't happening. He would miss the apartment. So, he had planned from the beginning to view the apartment, see what he could get out of it, and then not take it? Because it sure sounded like it. No mention of how he was looking forward to actually living in the apartment with us or anything, just what he wanted now that he wouldn't be taking the room. Sounded like he had thought more about that than actually about taking the room. And as for missing the apartment, he didn't ever live here. Here. How the heck would you miss it? The me parts were me just thinking. I just replied I wouldn't be able to help him out with any of his requests, and he surprisingly let it go without any fuss. I dodged a bullet there for sure. As luck would have it, the roommate I then picked was amazing and we're still friends today. <laughs>
That's nice. That's nice. I'm glad. That guy was a little weird. <laughs> That's really weird of him to do. Um, but you're okay now. That's all that matters. Oh. All right, this story's called Parent Demands Free Babysitting. Okay, so a few prefacers to make the story make sense. Sorry if it's a long read. Not okay! One, I'm a teaching assistant at an inner city nursery school. We work with a lot of families who need our help in various ways, and mostly they are wonderful people and incredibly grateful. The child care is entirely free to them, as this country provides 15 hours of free child care to all three to four year olds and 30 hours free for working families. Parents of two-year-olds who meet the conditions can also get 15 hours. This is early targeted help for the most in need children. The parent in this story has a two-year-old and a four-year-old with us. Two, due to Brovid restrictions, the school is still open but no one in the area is supposed to be mixing in other people's homes. Three, it's not really my story. It happened to my colleague on Friday and she just told me about it today. I'm just stealing it to get my precious seven karma. I will not be using her real name for reasons that will become obvious. Only two relevant characters in this one. My colleague and parent, a young mom of three living on her own. Story time! My colleague always used to babysit for various parents pre-Brovid, but obviously hasn't been doing it recently. Last week, parents started pestering her to babysit after work on Friday and finally convinced her when she told teach... Ah, uh, of my colleague... I keep saying teacher's assistant in my head. Um, told my colleague that she needed her to come for just a couple of hours while she did the Christmas Christmas shopping for the kids, as she is on her own and can't get them presents while they're there, as it will ruin Christmas for them. My colleague agrees to three hours babysitting for 15 pounds, which as a parent myself, I consider to be a bargain tis. So my colleague goes straight from work on Friday to parents' flat to find five children there, and parent and a friend getting a lot more dressed up than you would to go shopping. Parent explains that as they haven't been out in so long, they just want to look nice as shopping is the most most exciting thing they have going on now. Fair enough. Parent introduced my colleague to her friend's kids and explained that they were staying the night, so my colleague was watching them too. Not cool. But my colleague lets it slide because she's far too nice a person. Parent and her friend leave, saying they'll be back by 7 and explaining where the kids' tea is, etc. At 7.30, parent texts to say they're held up but will be back by 9 and asks my colleague to put all the kids to bed by 10. Yeah, I know. She then says, stops responding to her phone at all. Parent and friends stagger back in at 2.30 in the morning, smelling of booze and weed, and explain they'd gone to a party. My colleague just wants to go home and asks for her 15 pounds. She didn't even try to ask for more despite being there an extra seven hours. And parents start swearing at her and asking why the hell she should pay her. She rants about how she's entitled to free childcare, how my colleague was just sitting there and calls her a racial slur that is sometimes used by all people to refer to people of Pakistani origin. <gasps> Not my kinfolk! My colleague feels very nauseous and just leaves. Bad enough, right? So yesterday, parent sees my colleague as she's picking up her youngest and apologizes for shouting and being drunk, but no mention of the racism or money. Then sweetly asks if next time she babysits, she can make sure to bring a packed lunch since my colleague had made herself a sandwich whilst there. You know, money is actually tight for some of us, she says. Oh, I wanna slap her! I wanna slap her so hard! With the calm expression of how wrong her actions were. All right, this story's called, No, I Won't Ask My Sister to Write Your Book. My sister is a professional author with several books in print, both fiction and nonfiction. I brought up in my workplace recently how she's just recently sold her most recent novel and is currently in the editing phase to get it publication ready. That's when a coworker piped up. Her parents both passed away in the last few years, had really interesting lives, and wouldn't it be awesome if my sister could write their life story in her next book? It's it's a guaranteed bestseller, she claimed, and my sister would only benefit from the exposure by that kind of partnership. She even literally said, I'll tell her the story. She can write it down and we'll split the profit 50-50. I immediately shut her down. I'm a mostly unpublished writer myself and I know firsthand how ideas are cheap, writing is hard, and there's no way in heck that just telling somebody your idea is worth 
50% of the proceeds. The vast majority of published writers are nowhere close to self-sustaining on their writing alone. Even my own sister still pays the bills as a community college English teacher. I eventually told this co-worker, if you truly believe your story is a guaranteed bestseller, then you should have no problem shelling out the money for a professional ghostwriter or learning how to write yourself. My sister has her own career and her own ideas, and she sure as heck doesn't need yours. Rant over. Okay, well, first of all, OP, you seem a little confrontational there, buddy. It's not like it's common knowledge, all the work that goes into writing a book. Like, I don't even think about people writing books. Like, they're just there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> My cousin Myra uh, published a book. It's called Patient S, and she worked really hard on it. You guys should check it out. It's on Amazon. Her name's Myra Khan. Anyway, OP, <laughs> chill out. I'm sure she didn't mean anything bad by suggesting their plan. It's all right, man. It's all right. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.